She is a face you may remember on CCM Sunrise. She's been a guest and guest co-host here. Larissa <laughs> Lamb joins us now to tell us about her documentary film, Finding Cleveland. But before we get to that, Larissa, tell us a little bit about another campaign you're on with, Suicide Prevention. Yeah, um, I actually have uh, done a p series of PSAs uh, for uh, one, you know, the general public and also the Asian American community and women um, for suicide prevention um, called Hashtag I Feel Alive. And it's kind of centered around a song I have called I Feel Alive. It's an awesome song, oh, by thank the way. You. And I think <laughs> I you performed, performed it here on, on CCN Sunrise. Yeah. Sunrise. Yeah. And um, it's really about celebrating life. And I think a lot of times it's, it's not really a sexy subject that people talk yeah. about. But yeah. I don't know if you know this, but ho you know, suicide is actually the leading cause of death over homicide. So oh, wow. there's actually double the amount of people that that die by suicide than that die by homicide. Um, and I think it's often you know, not talked about. So it's something, I, I've lost a few friends to suicide, and oh. so um, it's something that's been, clear, that's been close to my heart. And so um, you know, I hope these, these PSAs will help a lot of people. But how do people find the PSAs? They can find them at loveanddiscovery.com. And, and it's actually a mental health blog that I launched um, you know, in support of the campaign. But I have also personally struggled through depression um, and, and have family members who have mental health challenges. And so um, it's about bringing awareness to, to all these subjects. OK. And that kind of ties into what we're talking about with Finding Cleveland, your documentary yes. about um, your husband's dad, who was an immigrant, right? Yes. And there's like a tie-in to Yeah, you know, I, I think, you know, people are, you know, think like, wow, these are two really different things that yeah. you're doing. But, you know, I think one of the things being Asian, you know, American and having parents that are first generation who were born overseas and then came here, I don't think a lot of people realize um, the mental health um, sometimes struggles that people have coming as immigrants and some of the trauma that um, people experience. And I think one of the things that um, came out of this, this process of making this documentary about um, my, my husband's our kind of search for his grandfather is that his father grew up without a father. And so that one was already a, a traumatic childhood you know, incident where he grew up not knowing his father. Then he came over to the U.S. when he was 14 years old, didn't speak a whole lot of English, and he had been robbed a couple times in inner city Oakland. Um, and there was all these traumas. And then so there was a reason why he was very closed off and, and didn't talk about a lot of things. And so I think this film, in some ways, was a healing you know, process and almost like therapy for him because um, what we ended up uncovering when we went to Mississippi was, um, you know, it's a little bit of a spoiler alert, but I think huh. my, my father-in-law grew up thinking he, his father abandoned him, didn't love him, and one of the things that we ended up uncovering when we, uh, through a series of kind of miraculous events, is, is that his father would have traded everything to be with his son. Oh, a lot of emotion there then, I bet. Yeah, it's, it was a very emotional journey, and so the, the, the documentary that we made is the documentary short, and, and it kind of chronicles the, the 48 hours that we were, less than 48 hours that we were in Cleveland, Mississippi, and uncovering this whole population of Chinese. Like, I don't know. I, I'm a California <laughs> yeah, girl. I'm, aware. I'm a California girl. Uh -huh. And I just thought, you know, like everyone else, it's like, okay, Chinese, gold mines, you know, uh, railroads. And then I, I thought literally we were going to find one gravestone with like my, with Baldwin's grandfather and great grandfather, and that was it. And we ended up covering this whole population of uh, up to several thousand, a few a few thousand at one point, um, in Mississippi Delta. Wow, down in the no. south. Down in the south. <laughs> now you're also the music composer on this documentary, I, correct? I am the music composer um, on this documentary, and actually I first joined in to be the music composer, and then um, I was looking at the rough cut, and I, I kind of jumped in and said, you know what, I kind to know where the direction is. Got to take control, right? Got to take control because <laughs> I wanted people to experience what it was like to be there and uncover all these things in Mississippi that you know was just just miraculous. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, what what happens next? Well, we're doing a screening uh, for people who are interested in seeing the film um, on November seventeenth at the Pasadena Central Library. Oh, good. It's a free screening, open to the public, seven p.m. Um, and we'll do a little music because my husband and I are you know music artists uh -huh. first, um, and so we're going to share a little bit of music. We're going to show our film, have a discussion, um, and it's, it's something for all ages, um, something that I think also, you know, people who may, it's not just for Asians, it's not just for people that are history buffs, I mean, I think anybody will find a connection, because it's about family, it's about finding your roots, um, and we just want people to kind of know this slice of history, and, and really in this, in this climate about immigration and about racial relations, I think this film sheds a lot of light on the role of the Chinese in the, in the midst of segregation in between black and white. That's awesome, and Wonderful. for those who don't know, just real fast, um, Baldwin is like the rapping engineer, right? Yes, so he's he is. Like, he's the 
lyrical his music engineer. It's really okay. cool. I love his. I'll have to um, check that out. I, I want to be an engineer. Yeah. So <laughs> bad. It's I all about that. bucking stereotypes, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, so the film is Finding Cleveland. Yes. It's going to run at the Pasadena Central Library mm -hmm. November 17th. Yes. So people should come out and see that. And we're making a second longer documentary, um, almost like a sequel, um, that will be out sometime next year. But we're touring the country with it. So if you if you miss the November, November 17th, um, you know, check our website, FindingCleveland.com, and you'll see the listings for other screenings. Good. Are there Perfect. tickets for that, or do you, are no, you show up? No, it's just just show up. It's first come, first serve seating, and it's in their auditorium, um, which is a, a, a wonderful space. Perfect. FindingCleveland.com. Yes. Awesome. Thank, Thank you, you Larissa. so much, Larissa. Okay. Coming up, Taste of Sunshine with Chef Sunrise. Carmen. Coming up, Taste of Sunrise with <laughs> Chef Carmen. Yeah. Uh, she brings us three C's, catering, cakes, and consulting. I like the cakes part. <laughs> <laughs> Wait till you see what she has for us. Slow cooked beef brisket with fresh made chimichurri sauce. I don't even know what that is, but it sounds it's pretty awesome. good. And a side of roasted veggies. Coming up.